walk down the side and what I'm gonna do is I've got, I've got my rhubarb with me that needs to go in the ground. I'm gonna chuck it in, just right there, right next to the polytunnel. Just right there. I'm gonna chuck it in there. Now in <laughs> the safety of the polytunnel. Let's let's take a little seat on the on the chair that is dry and is sinking in the ground because it's wet in here. Uh, there's probably also an echo. Now it's very warm in here, it's nice, it's going to be a great environment for my tomatoes and cucumbers and potentially, oh also my aubergines because I have my aubergines to go in here. So this was just um, a polytunnel that I got from Sutton's and it was only cheap. I, I've been looking at like the proper professional, you know, polythene polytunnels and I was thinking to myself do I want to invest that much that soon and I'm thinking no because I want to see how this kind of growing year goes and the plot and how it's going to be I didn't want to you know invest in something that was magnificent and then not not fully be able to use it if that makes sense i want to see how the ground is here and how much i can improve it and all of that kind of thing so so yeah this is just a it's two by three meters uh so it's three meters long and two meters wide and i thought it was going to be like on the smaller side but actually i think this is more than adequate what I'm going to do is put tomato, like put two thingies down the side, so like down the side here and obviously this side as well, and have it kind of like a U shape, so it comes up the end up here. Yeah, so I have like a U shape of growing. One thing that scares me about the polytunnel is the fact that we do get quite a bit of wind up here, and I am absolutely terrified of the wind just whipping it so what I've done if you can see these orange straps going over the top I have uh, purchased some kind of ground anchors they screw into the ground they're really long I've purchased some of those and screwed them into the ground and then over the top I have put some ratchet straps because I've seen a few other people that have done similar so that they're, they're kind of secure right in the ground and then the ratchet straps have gone over both ends so that it gives it a lot more anchorage because we have dug it down so it's gone down a fair way into the ground and then uh, the, I don't know if you can see so we've kind of piled some mud over the sheeting and that's also over the steel bars as well but when the wind blows, even now it's quite windy today, we're meant to have gales of 55 miles an hour later. I am just absolutely terrified that it's going to blow away. <laughs> it shouldn't do because it is quite secure, like the amount of force that it will need to, to lift it and to you know blow it, it's going to be quite a lot and I don't think it will go anywhere. But it's just one of my constant fears that it's just going to blow away. But it's really, really warm in here. It's nice it's very uh there's lots of condensation on the ceiling and stuff so it's it's quite quite um liquidy in here at the moment i obviously need to do something like with the ground before i put any tomatoes or any kind of produce in here i do have a, some ground sheet at home and some pegs and i forgot to bring it today but i've realized that there's slabs in here that i need to lift as well there's four slabs so I need to lift those to create a path down the middle before I can put the ground sheet down because I don't want to put the ground sheet over the slabs. Um, and what I'm going to do is just keep the ground sheet down and put compost on top of the ground sheet to grow my tomatoes in and everything for this year. And then potentially next year lift the ground sheet. It's just because there's a bunch of stubborn weeds and I want to make sure that they are entirely gone. And I think the ground sheet is just going to be the best way to do that and then it will suppress everything I can put some compost on top of the ground sheet and if I need to I can create some holes in the ground sheet to put my tomatoes and everything in um, 
but yeah I think that's gonna probably be the best way to get rid of these weeds without having to dig everything over because I don't I'm not a fan of digging I hate it really and I would do I would like to do as much no dig as possible uh, so I need to remember to bring the ground sheet and peg it down because at the moment this is <laughs> it's just storage for a cardboard box that I need to put in my compost and I've also got these big water canisters which I'm going to fill with water so I can put it onto the corner of each of uh, the polytunnel corners so that it's got extra anchorage just in case it decides to blow away because <laughs> then that's quite a heavy weight to keep it down I don't think it's going anywhere but it's just one of my fears but today I do have um, some new mint varieties that I need to pot up and I need to spread a little bit of compost and put my rhubarb in that's been waiting at home and we'll just check on a few other things around the allotment. my battery or well, my camera died uh, and it's getting windy and it's starting to rain so I'm going to just show you what I've done um, and we'll just inspect some of the crops a little bit because there's been a little bit of uh, not carnage but some of them are just not not performing which is my fault because I probably should have protected them but also I'm just like I might just seed them at home and then bring them to the polytunnel and then I can put them out then so I've put my rhubarb in this is a temperley early rhubarb I bought it from the garden center it's 10 pounds um, and it's been sitting in the pot at home and it's got quite big it only had this one maybe two leaves when I bought it now it's got all of these leaves new sproutings coming up so hopefully soon we should have some rhubarb and then I've also planted up my mint varieties so I've got lots of mint at home uh, mint and lemon balm uh, strawberry mint and then just like your plain old regular mint and then I've got some apple mints variegated apple mints which smells amazing and some peaches or berries and cream mint which also smells absolutely amazing. So I've just potted those up in my free pot that I got from the garden centre for spending over a certain amount. So they're doing there. I've also composted and, oh, I put my rosemary in. Put my little thing of rosemary in and I dug up those two slabs and I've mulched half this bed. So then I've got to probably buy another three bags of compost to do that side couple of bags of compost to do inside the polytunnel but that it's not going anywhere I've tested the the ground screws let me show you actually because I couldn't get this one all the way in so it's they're 16 inches um, I've screwed this one in as far as I could possibly do it and then I've got 
ratchet straps to hold it down. They're not too tight. There's a little bit of slack, but it's, like, I've been tugging on this. It's not going anywhere. Not, not with my force. And I feel like I've got probably more force than the wind has. Unfortunately, I lost two spinach, um, but the rest of them, especially this one, seems to be doing okay. It's got a little bit nibbled, but that's fine. I was thinking maybe I should fleece it, but I've weathered it off. Uh, maybe I've lost two others up there as well, two others there. But to be honest, I'm gonna I'm growing some more spinach. I'm gonna grow it kind of incrementally. So. Yeah, that's um, unfortunate. My slug, I don't think it's slugs. I think it is mice because there is a mouse hole. There was a mouse hole. I've now covered it, but there was a mouse hole. And unfortunately, <laughs> my spring onions aren't loving life. So, so windy um no carrots spring onions i'm hoping that they kind of do a little bit better but i do have other spring onions at home um i'm just i've never had any success with spring onions honestly i i just don't i just don't don't know i just may i don't know whether i left these too long in their seed trays or or what but they're not looking too great, unfortunately. The good news is the broad beans are doing really well. This one has got a little bit munched, but it's okay, we can sacrifice one. We've got quite a few in here. Like this one is just doing amazingly. Come on. They're, they're nice and hardy, so they don't mind all this wind. Um, so that's the one thing that is growing really well, as well as my garlic and onions. My garlic was looking a little better, but now that it's got a bit wet again and it's a bit uh, trenchy, like sludgy, they are just getting a little bit yellow, but I didn't prepare this bed at all. I just put them straight in as soon as I got the allotment because it was one of the first things that I needed to put in. I needed to put it in quick, but they're doing okay. Uh, the elephant garlic at the back there is looking really big and nice, but the unfortunate incident is my peas. There are a few shoots that have come up, but I don't know if you can see these like little, little bits. Something has come and dug all of my pea seeds. So I definitely need to cover the peas. I'm going to wait a little, like wait until next week and then try and plant some more. I'm also gonna plant some more at home and then fingers crossed we will get some peas. We do have potato shoot so the potatoes the first earlies are growing so only one but if i only get one that's fine i've got some growing in the pot at home so that's fine the ones in the pot at home did go in sooner so i'm hoping that these are just all going to come up so there's eight in this section the second earlies i mean they're not doing anything yet but i've got the mounds ready to earth them up i'm gonna need another bag of compost just to keep on earthing these guys up but i'm really pleased that we do have some potatoes so we will have a yield of something soon <laughs> well not soon but it's got a lot a lot of growing to do but we will have we will have some potatoes this year i was going to clear all of this today so that i could get my parsnips in because i need to get them in asap but it's just so windy and it's cold and it is going to rain soon and i yeah i don't have the enthusiasm to sort all of this out today so we're going to come back another day and tackle this i do have to come and do some more shallots i will come probably saturday to do these but i've got another bag of shallots to fill in the rest of the bed and i also need to bring a bag of compost because i need to put some compost in so that i can start to put in some seeds pea seeds on this side so we need quite a few bags of compost and then we should be good for mulching all of the beds and getting everything in but yeah the next next tasks will be the shallots and 
attempting some more peas and things and just trying to harden things off to go in. There's a bird somewhere, I can hear it, but I can't see it. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, even though it was kind of short. Uh, but it's just so, so windy. It's gonna get even windier later, so I will come up tomorrow, Friday, at some point, and just check that the polytunnel is still here and that it hasn't blown away, because that is just my biggest fear. Um, but it's meant to get peak windy at about six and then die off, so I may even pop up this evening just to make sure that it's there rather than doing it tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, I would... That bird's back. I'd really appreciate if you could, would consider subscribing and liking the video and leaving a comment as well. Do you have any advice for my peas and just everything in general? Do I just need to fleece stuff? Is that what I need to do? But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys soon.